Thank you for joining Huda's Career Chat. For those joining for the first time, I'm a career development professional. What I do is basically work with my clients, so whether individual or corporate, and help them to move forward in their goals and careers for sure. And for you, what really matters today is that I am here to answer your career and education questions. So get them ready and as I am looking forward to hearing them. But as usual, before I start, I like to share with you some tidbits and some information about questions that were asked last time. And one of the questions last time that was asked was, is a virtual internship uh, the same as a um, non-virtual internship? The, my answer to was, of course, any experience you do is, is important. And another question was about narrowing down choices for university. Uh, this, these are all good questions and today the focus is more about what not to do when trying to narrow down future education choices. So I just kind of took the opposite information of it rather than say this is what you should be doing. Um, I thought I would give you a little bit of what not to do so that you can decide of what you could do to move forward. The most important thing is do not spend too much worrying about it. Just worrying about it in of itself is not enough to help you narrow down your choice. So rather than stressing about it, actually do something about it. And one of the things I uh, suggest for my client is to have a plan of how you're going to deal with it, how you are going to narrow down the sources. Uh, basically a goal of when you would like to know that choice of yours. What you need to remember is one choice of education program is not a lifetime commitment. I'm sure you know. Uh, many people who have a degree, let's say in engineering, but are working in sales. And so this is important always to remember. But the more important thing is having a plan it will help you not worry about figuring it out. Because you have a plan, you follow your step-by-step -step plan, and you know that eventually you will figure out your education choice. Having a plan, of course, requires a few habits, habit adjustment is that, that today I'm going to do this, I'm going to do some research, or uh, I'm going to uh, go out and explore opportunities. So that's what the plan would entail, and having the plan would actually take out some of that worry about your ability to find a choice for university. The second point I really like to share is do not shy away from new experiences. New experiences are so important in helping you narrowing down your future education choices. And even some young clients come to me and they have actually finished their university, but still not sure what they want to do. So this idea of having a strategy and uh, going out and exploring new experiences applies to you as well if you've just graduated and you're not sure what field you want to work in. If an opportunity comes up and you think you kind of want to do it, go ahead and take it. And I will give you an example of a client, young client of mine who recently uh, wanted to work in a certain field, but we were not able to find a, an opportunity for her at that point in that field that she wanted to work in. So uh, one of the opportunities that came my way was working, in a, working on a farm in their farm's store, selling their produce. She was hesitant to take it at first, but when she was... Um, faced with, okay, this is a choice that I could probably consider. Uh, she went ahead and did it. And guess what? She only had to volunteer there for a week because within the week, I was, she was helping one of the farm's customers load up their groceries into their car. The customer asked her what she, how long she had been working on the farm and they got into talking and she explained to him her situation. And right away, he gave her his card and he said, they gave her, give me a call. I'd like to interview you for this position. Sure enough, he interviewed her. She got the position that she had wanted. So really do not shy away from taking on experiences that you feel are far-fetched or that you feel that may not fit exactly with where you want to be headed. 
uh, take it on, particularly if the uh, person hiring you is understanding is that you may move forward to another opportunities. The, so there's a flexibility there. Take it on and see. But also helping out the neighbors, chatting out with, um, with other people is important to collect data. So if you don't have an opportunity this summer, do some what I call informational interviews. Uh, this is your chance to meet with people who are working and they will tell you about their job. So for example, if you're considering dentistry as an option, you meet with a dentist, have a chat. Uh, virtual chat nowadays are more popular, but have a chat and see what is a typical dentist day look like and is it really something you want to pursue. So do not shy away from new experiences, do not shy away from reaching out to others and asking them about their experiences working in a particular field. This will definitely help you narrow down any future education choices you want to make, but it also works for equally for finding a job in a uh, narrowing down a job that you want to work in. Next tip is do not expect to find your number one choice within a week. That's what a lot of clients tell me. Okay, I have an application, I need to fill out, I need to know what I want to do. Ideally, I tell, my, I, uh, I tell parents that it's time, the time to start thinking about what you want to do when you go to university is grade 10. So if you're in grade 10 or grade 11, this is the perfect time to start so that you can go try out experiences, talk to people so that when it's time to fill out that application, you are ready. Now, if you're currently finished, just finished grade 12, and I would have assumed that you have already filled out that university form, and if you haven't, I have to assume that you decided to take perhaps the fall session off and join in January instead. Um, and this is good because you still have time to experiment from now until the next couple of months to see what works for you. With this one, it probably working or volunteering may be not um, an option for you to sp speed up the process of narrowing down your choice. So definitely informational interviews become important. If you're in grade 10 and 11, now is the time to go out and volunteer or try to get a part-time job or even a full-time job for the summer if that's an option to learn about what you want to do and what you hope to accomplish. But yes, choosing that university or education program in one week is rarely a good idea. And um, unless you've grown up always knowing what you want to be. And, um, but if you can't find it in a week, don't beat yourself up. It's okay, it is normal. And um, just um, go on on these informational interviews. The last point I wanna share with you today is do not overwhelm yourself with too many program or university choices. So some clients come to me with 10 choices. I'm like, okay, these are the 10 choices that I think might work. Can you help me narrow them down? Um, I think in my opinion, 10 choices is a bit too much. So I would say definitely narrow them down to five. So if you have top 10, take your top five, do some research on the top five, narrow them down to two or three, then you can add the others from your top 10 list. So definitely always start small. And if five is too much for you, narrow them to the top two and then take one out, then add one more until you feel, okay, I have chosen my one top program. I do have some clients who have interest in two programs and they can't really get rid of it. And so we try to see which seems more important. In, in today's world, especially in universities, they are more open to what is called interdiscipline. So you can major in two programs where you have either a major and a minor uh, or perhaps two majors if you're willing to put in the extra hours necessary to complete the courses. Uh, but there's always a minor if you can down to two that you could consider adding as a part of your interdiscipline application education. Part of what I did for me is I did education with gifted education, gifted learning. So definitely interdiscipline is, is common, but really focus on what is important to you. And that is really the plan, is finding out what you envision yourself doing. Any commitment you do in an education program can be temporary, 
as I said before, we know a lot of people who have majored in a certain education program, but ended up working in a different field. It all depends on the experience you accumulate as you are studying your university program and completing it. So I just quickly go through those points again. Do not spend too much time worried about it, rather spend too much time planning it and strategizing it. Part of the plan should include not shying, shying away from new experiences or from doing informational interviews. Do not beat yourself up if you can't decide in one week. Actually, it needs more than that. You need to spend a lot of time figuring it out. And uh, some people may figure it out in a week if they have always known what they wanted to do, but it typically takes a lot longer than that. And do not overwhelm yourself with too many programs and choices, because if you do find yourself in your situation, it could get a bit frustrating. So try to narrow it down and then eliminate programs as you move forward in your strategy and plan. In short, if you are trying to uh, narrow down your future education choices, don't worry, have a plan and be happy exploring your opportunities. It's a great time to enjoy the exploration process. So next we move on to having your questions answered. I am looking forward to reading your questions. As usual, please type your questions in chat. There are no right or wrong questions. If um, you are thinking of a question, go ahead and ask it because no question is too silly to contemplate and share. And more importantly, no question is too silly for me to contemplate and respond to you because I believe if you are thinking of that question, others are thinking of it as well. My promise to you is that if I don't know the answer to let you know, or answer it to the best of my ability, and then I will do my best to find out the answer for you and respond to it in future episodes. And this is where I usually share my tidbit at the beginning of the chat. So let's go ahead and <coughs> excuse me, start with the first question. You talked about the importance of networking when job seeking in previous episodes. Yes, I do love networking. I think it's really the number one way to find a job. So the question is, how much time do you suggest I spend on networking every day or week? Where if you are a full-time job seeker, I would say 50% of the time should be spent on networking. Yes, you have to have a very uh, clean resume ready. Is to have to have a template for a cover letter. And this will take the rest of the 50% of the time, um, working on the resume, working on the cover letter, and of course, researching for jobs and researching the companies you want to apply to is the other 50%. For me, I, ideally, if you're a job seeker, I think you think of it as a full-time job. So definitely putting in eight hours a day, five days a week. And four of those hours per day needs to be on networking. Networking can be what we talked about already, sort of informational interview. So the informational interview is not only for narrowing down education, but also for narrowing down job positions. The informational interview would uh, allow you to know the type of tasks that happen every day, but also to build that network. Because as we talked about the young lady who talked to the customer picking up his groceries, networking does work. So yes, 50% of the time should be spent on networking. Next question asks me if, do you think that online jobs will permanently increase once the pandemic is over? That's a very good question and economists really cannot make a decision on that and uh, we are waiting to see what's gonna happen. But really my answer would be, we have changed a lot of jobs, have already been transformed online and a lot of companies may be liking the cost-saving effect of it 
because they have already invested in computers for their employees, invested in the connections, you know, the internet connections to be able to go on Zoom or other um, the Microsoft team app. So the investment has gone out there. The online jobs may remain. And a lot of the companies opening up right now is what they're doing is telling their employees to work from home, but really go out if they need to meet clients in person so that you can get that human touch connection with the client. There could be four days of online work instead of it used to be work from Fridays from home. Now you're just going to go meet your, your other employees on Friday. So there is going to be a change, which is a wait and see, but the transfer of jobs to online has already increased. And yes, I see that there will be a level of comfort by some employers saying we've invested in the infrastructure. Why not continue it and then have smaller offices, so smaller rental, rental space for them and just meet when necessary. But it's a wait and see situation. Um, it's uh, something to look forward to and see how things can change. Uh, people who are not comfortable working online may be seeking uh, jobs out of the house and we will see how that turn out. Thank you for that question. That was a good one. Is it better to have a low paying job that allows for a work life balance versus a high paying job that causes a lot of stress? This is a question that only you can answer. Really, it depends on the person and what they want out of life. So the question to ask is, do I want work-life balance? And I think we talked about this in previous episode where I had a client who uh, was in his 50s working 12 to 14 hours a day, even on weekends sometimes, and he loved his job and he was very distraught that he lost it. And he did not put in, I would not mind, the stress that came with the job, he actually was enjoyed the challenges and invigorated by the stress that he was uh, feeling a little bit unhappy because he did not have that sort of stress in his life. It definitely ask the questions is what do I want out of life? Do I want a job that challenges me all the time or do I want a job where I can go in at nine, come home at two and clock in the hours and then I have nothing to worry about that job. I can forget about it so I can go out for lunch with friends or dinner and hang out. Getting to know yourself, building that self-awareness is very important in deciding the type of job you want. So that's the process to start. Ask yourself questions about what is important. What is a typical day look like? That would be the highlight of your week. These are questions to reflect on. It is all about knowing yourself, about self-confidence in that this is the life that's going to make me happy. So there is no right or wrong answer. It really depends on the person. I know for myself, I love doing my job. I don't mind doing 14 hours within this job. And I would definitely miss it if someone says, okay, no, you're just gonna work five hours a day on this job and the rest of the day, you just can do whatever you want. Because I'd probably be reading about it and just building on it. So really think about yourself and what is important to you. How do I prepare for a job that I know I want? This would be a great start if you already know what you want. You are well on your way to finding it. And preparing for it would be looking up for job postings. That would be number one. Look at job postings and what are the requirements for it. So if the requirement is 
a certain degree and you are in high school, this is the time to say, okay, if this is the job I want, I should aim for that degree or something pretty close to it, something that intertwines with it. And if you already have accomplished your degree, but you are eyeing a job that you probably don't have a degree for, this is the time to build the experience. So uh, one example would be, let's say if I wanted to apply for a job at a, to work as a lecturer at the university or as a professor at the university, what would be the requirements? Okay, I already have the education necessary for it, but what else is required? Okay, publications are required. So you have to have five to six publications that show that you are knowledgeable on the topic, you have done a lot of research. I go back and say, okay, I don't have that. I try to find ways to accumulate that. What else? You have to have had uh, teaching experience, one to five years of teaching experience, let's say. I have to fill my resume with these expectations as well. Networking comes in. If you are eyeing a particular company, have an informational interview with a person either working in that position that you are eyeing or is in a close within the department. So if you can't get that exact person because you are eyeing their job perhaps, but anybody working within that department, within that program, and uh, they can help you prepare for it. And of course, once you have that, you have to wait for the position to open, but make sure you fill out your resume with the requirements for it and definitely network. What are the signs that I may not be happy in my job? A sign that you may not be happy in your job is definitely when you wake up in the morning, you feel you don't want to go to that job. You'll find yourself dawdling, taking your time getting ready. So that would be the first good indication you're not excited to go there. And that would be, of course, a daily thing. You know, sometimes we do wake up and decide, oh, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not feeling today. You wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And that is okay. But if this in for feeling is day in, day out, it's time for you to stop and say, why am I feeling this way? Why don't I want to go to the job? Right now we're working from home. Um, there could be other reasons. It's not an indication that... You are not happy in your job. It's just an indication that perhaps working from home has been a lot of pressure on you. And um, particularly if you think you were happy before the pandemic in your job. But that is one indication. Another indication is when you are working with everyone else, you find yourself critiquing the company, critiquing the people who work in it. This is a sign of dissatisfaction. Sit back, think about why are you having that feeling? What is it you don't like about it? And what is putting the pressure on you uh, that is making you feel, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, this lady thinks she knows everything, but I don't think so. So you are critiquing your coworkers. There's also another sign of dissatisfaction where the work you get is not fulfilling anything you feel like it's just going the grind you know going with the motions that's another reason that could be uh, an indication that you're not happy at work when you are in that situation try to find the reasons for your unhappiness try and find the reason that are making you dissatisfied with your current position and see if you can change them a lot of time talking to your manager or supervisor and saying well this is my situation this is where I'm feeling and sometimes it takes a bit of mentoring and you find yourself happy at work just voicing what is concerning you and what is bothering you it's definitely not a situation that you want to keep at if you find that you're not happy at work uh, so you need to do some changes. Changes can start with talking to your supervisor and your manager and sharing your feelings and say, is there a way you can help me fix that? 
and I wouldn't recommend like right away jumping and leaving, but really trying to see uh, maybe there is something happening at home with you that is concerning and that is making you not able to focus on your job and so you're not able to give it 100% and that's why you're not happy. So definitely a lot of reasons, but yeah, so the two, I'm gonna give you just the two to think about how you feel about going to work every morning and what, how you act when you're at work. Are you gossiping? Are you uh, complaining? Are you um, questioning things and not doing anything about it? This is definitely an indication that you are not happy at work and it's probably time to do something about it. And uh, this is all the time I have for questions today. But as usual, before I let you go, I always like to share a quote. This was by Abraham Lincoln. The best way to predict the future is to create it. We talked about having a plan, having a strategy for your education. It goes the same without saying having strategy for a job you want or a career you want to follow is you have to create that strategy and that's how you can predict your own future. If you want to be successful in what you do, it's really important to create a vision of what you want to do. Once you can envision it, a lot of experts insist that you write it down. So once you write it down and envision it, maybe do a vision board. If you like to work with arts and crafts, uh, that will help you move forward and become successful in what you are hoping to accomplish. So I'll repeat it, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And by create it, we are talking about creating a plan for it so that you can move forward. So that's something for you to talk, think about, and uh, perhaps come back with more questions for next week. Thank you so much for being a part of Huda's chat today. Remember, you can visit me on writegarierfit.com and ask any questions. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And if you like the episode, you want to share it or you want to listen to it again, you will find it on YouTube and SoundCloud. Thank you so much for being part of Huda's Career Chat. And until next week, stay positive. <laughs>